everybody, welcome back to 12 Foot Chain. We're going to take on the great James Gang song from 1971 called Walk Away. We'll play through all of the intro section, verses, pre-chorus, chorus, and the leads. Get you all prepped for that song. And when you put it all together, here's a little bit of how it sounds. see the rest of that just click right here and you'll see the rest of the whole part two companion video where I cover the whole song in a performance format but today we'll go through each one of the parts of that song all right so first things first let's talk about the tone you want on your guitar so ideally um, ideally if you want to sound like the record you want to have a Les Paul in your hand or something close to it nice two fat humbuckers um, and if you don't have that, it's okay. He plays it on a Strat. He plays mostly Strats nowadays, or has for the recent years. And um, it sounds fantastic on that too. But on the record, I'm pretty sure that was a Les Paul. So I've got on my bridge pickup, um, I've got some overdrive. And I've got my volume rolled back a little bit to about eight. Here's full. And here's back to about eight. When you hear the intro on that song, um, it's still really dirty, but it's not maxed out. So um, on the rhythm part, so we're gonna back off the rhythm or back off the volume to about eight. So let's talk about this. So first is the intro. So the intro is just him starting to groove on what eventually will be the the pattern or a part of the pattern that he'll do during uh, most of the verses um, I believe these are 16th notes if you think about the the pattern of the song and the strum it's like you know those are I think those are 16th notes um, so you sort of got your hand going in that way. In terms of the position, when you watch him play this live, he does this. So we're playing in A to D. Um, check that. On the record, it's actually tuned down a half a step. Um, so I'm tuned down to E flat. So when I'm gonna play this in the A in the A position, which is where they do when you watch him play it live, um, but that's your A, that's your note for A. So when you're playing that first part, um, he's playing this up here. He's got a thumb over on the, uh, on the low E string. So I think he's got the open A. Um, I can't tell if he's got the open A or if he's actually fretting it here. Um, but he's flipping over from A to D. And what you want to watch out for when you're playing this is you sort of don't want to, you want to live on sort of the low strings. Um, you don't want to catch your B string or your high E. You sort of want to live. So I'm playing it that way. You're just, I'm just flattening my, um, ring finger here on the seventh fret, um, which is part of the mini D bar chord, but I'm leaving that A open the whole time. So you're playing a D over an, an A emphasized bass note. Right. That note, you want to sort of de-emphasize. It's a little too happy sounding. It's in there, but if you can sort of de-emphasize that when you're... Got your strum. Anyway, so on that first intro, here's how he's coming in. Gives that little space in there, which is very cool. And that's when the drums and the bass kick in there. So, 
So that's really it, and that's a very fundamental part of the rest of the verse parts of the song. Following that, there's a little intro lick that he does. Um, so uh, he plays, I believe he plays this up here. You're going to hit on your B string. You're up on 8 and 10. Turn that up a little bit. And that's it. So again, I'll do that slowly. So you're bending up from 12 on the B string. You have your pinky on the E on the 12th, on the 12th fret. And that's it. All right, now the verses. So bass and drums are now in, um, and he's really grooving on that A. So you're really sort of muting. It's, it's important to get that right hand muting um, on that to preserve that groove, that pattern. Right, so hitting that. And that's the important part to think about on the verses. Right, now it's gonna transition down to the pre-chorus. Um, the pre-chorus is an F sharp minor to a D. You can sort of play with that rhythm a little bit, um, but he's, he's not strumming chords and holding them. Right? He's really groove, and you see that 16th note happening with your right hand. goes to the D, you can let that one ring. Hit it every once in a while. Then it resolved from the D to the E. And now we're into the chorus, walk away. So your chords are A, B minor, C, B minor, right? So walk away. the intro part back to the next verse right so again let's take the pre-chorus through the chorus all right <laughs> There's a second guitar that plays on that chorus part um, that doubles the A, B minor, C part. Um, and to my ear, I don't think both guitars play it. They might. Um, but to my ear, the second guitar is making an emphasis point to when you play your bar chords, you're playing the E string as well. So A, on the A, you just keep it as an A. On the B minor, you grab the F sharp. You play that, same with the C. Right. So those notes are in there. Um, the bass guitar isn't hitting them. Those are the, there's a guitar that's hitting that. They both may be doing it, but somebody's doing it. So if you're playing this live, it'd be great to hit that. So that's it. So that's it for the verse sections and the pre-chorus and the chorus. Those just repeat 
um, throughout the song. Not super complicated. Um, the important part is just to get that groove going. Um, a lot of right hand technique on that, on the muting. All right, so let's talk about the solo. Okay, on the guitar solo, um, this is really built around um, the A chord and the D chords that are happening um, underneath it at this position. So you think about your A chord. Right? So we're gonna slide up and do sort of a major pentatonic-ish um, riff. He's mimicking the vocal melody is what's happening, right? So uh, your those are the notes, but slide, right? So you're sliding up to the third, which is uh, sixth fret on the third string. Then you're switching over to the fifth fret of the second string and seventh fret, and you're going to go up to that. Then you're going to bend from five up to seven. I'm keeping my hand position here because I know I got to go right back into that. So my bend is with my index finger. You could do. It's easier on your fingers. Uh, so do that twice. So you're mimicking the vocal melody. So the notes just plainly without the bending. It actually hits that high E. Okay, so the solo all together so far. E. Then you start again. On the record, the next little lick is actually played with two different guitars. Um, one guitar is playing these notes, and the other one's doing. Right? But you can easily mimic that by. I'm gonna flip my pick underneath. You don't have to. You can do one pick and one finger, but I'm gonna do, you're gonna pick the third and first string simultaneously. I'm gonna flip that underneath. I'm gonna use my fingers. Or, right, you're just doing that part of the A climb from that part of the A up to that part of the A. You hear that in a million different licks and a lot of Joe Walsh licks. And it's going to end on a very classic sounding Joe Walsh major pentatonic lick down here, um, working off your A position on the second fret. Actually, you hit the low note. And go back to your pick. Right. So the tricky part of that is that that bend, he holds that. He holds that note while you're doing. It's not. It's. It's really hard to do. In fact, I didn't nail that on my other video. Great leg. Total classic Joe Walsh, right? So that's a solo. Let's do it all uh, together. I'll do it. Um, I'll do it slow here.
almost. But that's that's the lick. So Joe Walsh, super tasty player, has a lot of neat little leads that he weaves in on um, a number of the verses. I'm not going to go through all of them in here. Um, I do cover them in my part two video, so give a click on that if you haven't already, um, and you can zoom in on those and see how those go. There's one lead I do want to spotlight, and it's got a super big bend on it, um, and it took me a while to figure out where he is doing that. So this is coming in um, sometime after the guitar solo. I think it's on the third verse, um, and um, it goes something like this. So, all based off of the A major pentatonic. So you're bending into it, and the timing of the bend when it comes in with the lyric is sort of key on that. Um, but the notes here, I'm starting up on 14. It's based on the A major pentatonic scale position here. Um, but I'm bending up on 14 on the third string. I'll do it slowly. Because the first, so I'm bending up, and I'll demonstrate, I'm bending up from the 14th fret on the G string, and I'll demonstrate this slowly. So the key on that bend is that you're, you're reaching that, and if you think about musically the, the lick that you hear, you hear Joe Walsh do it a lot, you hear a lot of players do it a lot, um, but it's this, it's that chromatic climb, but you don't, you don't play that first note, you bend into it, hear that difference, it's not, it's, right, so that big bend is on the D. 15th fret, 2nd string. So you're going to bend all the way up to there. I think it's a two-step two bend. I don't, I don't think it goes up that high. But it's around there. Even if you go higher, it's better. And you end on the A. So one last time. Just dig into that D, it's awesome. All right, let's talk about the outro. So on the outro, the chords underneath are your, I guess the chorus chords, A, B minor, C, B minor, and it just repeats. And so on, it just repeats. So he introduces two sort of things that are happening during the outro. One um, is a uh, done on a wah-wah pedal. I'm not going to do it with the wah. I'll show you the notes on what it is. So it's very easy. It's based off a of minor pentatonic in A. Um, and uh, I'm not going to demonstrate with the wah-wah, but I'll show you the notes here and the pattern. It goes. <laughs> play around with it a little bit, but that's the... That's the phrase, and it just repeats um, behind it. So layered on top of that is this awesome, really full sounding fuzz, which, you know, it's just, the song is building and building and it's going crazy and he holds one note, you know, the root note for a long time. I'm not gonna be able to replicate it here. Um, but you can check out my version of it on the other on the other companion video. Um, but it's just awesome, um, and uh, it just he just jams on that, plays around with it. He's got a whammy bar going on, um, and uh, great effect. Um, but it's a super fat fuzz, um, not normal sort of distortion or overdrive. It's fuzz, and um, that's going to get that tone. All right, and that's the outro. All right, well, that's Walk Away from the James Gang. Super fun song um, to play, and um, 
uh, Joe Walsh is always a joy to try and learn his little riffs and the way that he does it. It's so tasty the way that he plays them. And um, so I'll continue to work at it <laughs> to get it right. But um, that's uh, those are all the parts basically in the song. So work through those, listen to the record, and um, let me know in the comments what you think. If you learn something new, if there's another song you want me to take on, um, let me know that too. And hey, if you haven't um, subscribed yet to the channel, if you like what you're seeing, please do that. It's super important. Click subscribe, ring the bell, and it'll notify you every time that I'm putting out um, a new lesson, which I do at least every week. All right, so until next time, take care, everybody.